We are so excited today because finally we'll present the latest product development we've been working hard all summer to achieve, and that is the Micro Series. These small controllers are designed to do a single task, maybe at a specific location, maybe by a specific untrained person. And the cool thing is that just like any other Skahoy controller, you don't need a host system to communicate with your ATEM switch or your hyperdeck. You just need this box. It has an Ethernet cable coming in, goes directly to your hardware. You have a power plug, unless, of course, you buy the PO option, so you can have power over Ethernet. So let us just take a look at these 10 variants of the microcontroller and see what they can do. Before we look at the features on the front of these controllers, let's take a glance at the back. It's the same for them all. So on the back, you have an Ethernet plug and maybe you are bought the PO option. It means that the power for the device will come over the Ethernet cable. So you have a single cable connecting your controller. But if you didn't, we have a DC input here and a USB for programming. And that's it. So let's connect this one. And we plug in the Ethernet cable and the power cable. It will come up with some graphics and it's now connected to the ATEM switcher over here. So this device was programmed to do the following. On this button, we can cycle through inputs on the ATEM switcher. So it's like an input select row. And the clever thing about it is that the button itself will show you which input is now on preview. And it will follow whatever is configured for your multi-viewer. So it's simply cycling through the eight inputs on the multi-viewer, but it is skipping. If you have a black input, it will just skip that. So the cool thing is with this one, if you had a three camera operation, you just had three inputs on your multi-viewer and this button would cycle through the three inputs. If you hold this button, um, you'll have uh, a chance to configure what this button does. And right now it says uh, cut, now it says auto and now it says FTB, which is fade to black. So let's say we keep it at cut and we press the button here. So it's now a cut button and it cuts, as you can see on the ATEM switcher, it is making a cut operation. Okay, let me uh, hold this button again and press once. It now says auto. What do you think happens when I press it? It makes an auto transition. And then of course, if I go to FTB for fade to black, it will enable fade to black on the ATEM switcher. This micro is also based on the awesome smart switches. When you press the button over here, it will start playback of a hyperdeck. When you press it again, it will stop. But if you notice on the button, there's a symbol showing what's happening. So right now it will say, if you press the button, you play, but then it changes to a stop sign now. If you press and hold this button, it will actually start recording. So we built in a hidden feature that will give you even more flexibility. Now comes a really cool thing because the left button will select which clip you are playing back. So as you press this button, you'll see that the clip is queued up here, ready for playback, but also the graphical button will show you what the clip file name is, the power of the smart switches. The next micro is also based on smart switches, but it has an encoder too, and the encoder makes it perfect for settings. So we have programmed an example where it changes four different settings inside an ATEM switcher. And the first one is the mix rate. So you see on the smart switch, it says mix rate. It shows the mix rate from the ATEM switcher. And as you turn this knob, you can change the mix rate and you can send it over to the ATEM switcher by pushing it. So when you press the button, it will now show auxiliary one. So we have camera two on auxiliary one, but we want camera three. So we turn the knob, it says camera three, and then we can send it over to the ATEM switcher by pushing the button. You can see here on the ATEM switcher next to, we have now camera three on the ATEM switcher. Then we have media player one, so you can select the still for the media player. And finally, we have picture and picture position, which will adjust the XY position of the DV inside the ATEM switcher. This micro is selecting inputs by the lower button and doing a cut operation with the upper button. So as I press the input button here, you will see it cycles through all the active sources in the multi-viewer. If you configured any source as black, it will skip it. So it's cycling through only three different in this case. And when you have found the right source for preview, you press the cut button and it makes a cut. 
if you hold the button for a moment, it will make an auto transition. This micro is a HyperDeck controller and when you press the record button, it starts recording on the HyperDeck. When you press the stop button, it stops and it shows the input source on the HyperDeck. When you press the stop button again, it will show you or cue up the clip that we just recorded and if you hold it down, it will start playing back that clip. This micro has been programmed to key on a logo or a lower third. So as I press the first button, the name tag button, you'll see a name tag, a lower third with my name will appear on the program output. If I press the logo button, a station logo in the upper right corner of the program will appear with a smooth transition. This micro is designed for a case where you have like just two input sources and you want to fade to black once in a while. That could be an AV installation or something. So as you press one of the buttons, it is making a nice auto transition to the one source that could be a camera and the other button, it goes back to, let's say the computer source, or you can press the fade to black button and everything fades down to black. This micro doesn't do anything but show you stuff. Right now it's programmed to show you the status of a hyperdeck. So as I press the play button, you'll see the device will tell you it's playing. If I press the stop button, it goes back to stopped. If I press input, it will tell you that it's now in input mode. And finally, if you press record, it shows you that it's recording. Here it's programmed a little bit different. Right now it's telling you what is on auxiliary one on an ATEM switcher. And uh, we could easily change that by pressing the one button for camera one. You can see immediately it's reflected down here. If I press bars, you see it tells you color bars is on auxiliary one. So any input source on the ATEM switch will be shown with its correct name on the display. Again, it's without any connection to a laptop. It doesn't need the laptop. This box, the micro, talks directly to the ATEM switcher. Or what about a VU meter? In the ATEM switcher you can see the audio levels, but you can also see them on this Skahoy micro. So this talks again directly to the ATEM switcher, showing you what is the audio levels on your program out. This micro will show you audio levels from your ATEM switcher using LEDs. So you can see as I turn down the volume of the ATEM switcher, it's reflected over here on the VU meter. But you can also press these buttons to change to another input source. So let's go to camera three, for instance, which has some audio input. And you can see here is the volume for camera three. This micro is the uh, audio controller you never had for your ATEM switcher. So you have a single channel audio control with a knob adjusting the volume. You can see here as I turn this knob, the volume is taken up and down. When I press this button, the on button, the channel is enabled. When I press the AFV button, it's audio follow video. And it also has a small peak meter. Actually, this LED you see right there, it will light up green when the audio levels are okay. It's yellow when it's closing into the peak values and it's red, of course, if it's too high. This GPIO box has eight channels, which are both inputs or outputs. You configure it in a web interface. In this configuration here, I have put a uh, push button on channel number eight. And as I push this button in the web interface, I set it up to bring camera number four on program. So I push the button and camera number four goes on program. Likewise, we have an LED on channel number one. And this has been configured to light up when channel number three, input number three comes onto program. And I do that from the switcher software over here. So I bring camera three on and the LED is lit. So a GPIO box like this is usually used to configure and connect your broadcast hardware to any source outside like um, push buttons or lamps that you want to light up when a given event happens. The final device we'll show today is the Skahoy Tele system, but built into the micro form factor. You can see other videos online how the Skahoy Tele system works. We hope you have enjoyed all the micros I've shown you today and we're excited to hear what you think and also make many more in the future.